Hey guys, Miss Wynn here with our rotations notes. Okay, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so rotations are the third of our transformations, and we just covered two, right? Translations are transformations that move a figure. So move it left and right, up and down, right? A reflection is a transformation that flips a figure across either the x-axis or the y-axis. So it's like a mirror image, right? So today we're doing rotations, right? So when you hear the word rotations or rotate, maybe you'll think about the word revolve or turn or spin, right? So something that is rotating is kind of going around, right? So a rotation turns a figure. So that's our key word this time is turns a figure around a point that we call the center of rotation. Center of rotation. Okay. In eighth grade math, our center of rotation is always going to be the origin, which is the point zero, zero. Okay. The center of rotation is what everything or what the figure is spinning around, right? So we have a clock. The clock will be important in a little bit too. So we have a clock, right? The minute hand and a hour hand, an hour hand, right? Well, this pin in the very middle here that holds these two hands in the middle of the clock, that is the center of rotation for the clock because the, the end of this hand, so like this little, we'll do it a different color, this little point here at the end of the hand is always going to stay the same distance away from that center, no matter where it goes. So whether it's, you know, one o'clock, three o'clock, whatever, it's always going to be the same distance away, which I guess for a clock might be a couple of inches, right? So that center of rotation is really important. Um, if you're wanting to go into art or programming or like video game making and stuff, this is really important for animation because if you get the center of rotation wrong, that's where you get bugs where you jump and your character is like stuck in the sky or something like that. That happens from somebody not knowing eighth grade math and not getting their center of rotation right. Okay, so the center of rotation, again, for eighth grade math is always going to be the origin. Okay, so you think this might be difficult because rotations, okay, ro something can rotate a lot, like from zero to 360 degrees, that's a lot of degrees. Luckily, for what we're doing is we're always doing rotations in 90 degree turns. It's gonna be clockwise or counterclockwise. Right, so if we go back to our clock, label it here, erase this little, oops. Go back to our clock example, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oops, eleven, and twelve. Sorry, the one should go here. I didn't space them out enough. So I messed myself up. Okay, so we have our analog clock that looks like this, right? Well, when we are going clockwise, that means you're following the clock. So you see how the numbers go from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a clockwise turn. Right, so like the clock, so from left to right, going clockwise, it's a clockwise turn. We're also going to abbreviate this as CW for clockwise. Counterclockwise goes the other way. So instead of going from left to right, we're going from right to left. So against the clock going three, two, one, 12, you know, the other way, this way, is counterclockwise. So if you're drawing the letter C, it's counterclockwise. If you're drawing a backward C, that's clockwise. So we're going to abbreviate counterclockwise as C, C, W. Okay, when you rotate a figure, you wanna think about it as you're rotating the entire quadrant. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But that's the basics, right? We have 90 degree turns clockwise or counterclockwise. So that means, essentially, there's four turns that something can make. 90 degree turn, 
180 degree turn, 270 degree turn, and then 360. However, when you go 360, you just end up back where you started. And so if you ever heard that phrase, like somebody did a 180, like that means that somebody's personality really changed. Like he was really nice. And then suddenly he did a 180 and became this real mean dude, right? Well, sometimes people say this phrase wrong by saying he did a 360. But again, they didn't master eighth grade math because if you do a 360, you're right back where you started. So if you say that somebody used to be nice and then they did a 360, you're saying that they're still nice. Right. So let's show you an example here of these rotations. I'm going to use this little picture to help. So I'm going to take this picture here and then line it up with the quadrant. It doesn't have to be exact, but this to be close enough. All right. All right, there we go. So we're going to do these turns. Unluckily, Cami only does counterclockwise turns, so we're going to kind of be going backwards compared to what this table says. Um, but we're going to kind of discover the algebraic rule for ourselves. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to take this picture and we're going to rotate it. So when we click this little rotate button, it rotated and you see it went counterclockwise because it started this way and it went this way. So it went from left to right. So this is a 90 degree counterclockwise turn. All right, so I'm gonna go do this one in red. So this is a 90 degree counterclockwise turn. However, if we go clockwise, so we start here, each turn we're going through one quadrant and each of these quadrants is 90 degrees, right? So like you can see this 90 degree angle right here. Oh man. Yeah. This 90 degree angle right here. So that shows you that each of these quadrants is 90 degrees. Okay, so if we start with here, triangle TRI, and we rotate clockwise instead of counterclockwise, this would be 90 degree turn, would end up in this quadrant here. 180 degree turn would be this quadrant here. 270 degree turn is this quadrant. So we can see that when we go counterclockwise, it's just one turn, one 90 degree turn here. But since we are doing three turns clockwise, that tells us this is the same as 270 degrees clockwise. So these two mean the same thing. And you'll see that in the table too. 270 degrees clockwise is the same as 90 degrees counterclockwise. Those two numbers, 90 and 270, are always going to go together. Right? So you can see over here too, 90 degrees clockwise is the same as 270 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, well, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace over this triangle. This is T prime, R prime, I prime. Okay, and then I'm going to connect the dots. So that's T prime, R prime, I prime. Um, I want that there because we're going to move the picture, rotate the picture again and just keep going like that. So I'm gonna leave that there for the time being. Okay, so let's look at these points. Okay, let's first look at the original TRI. Forgot to copy those down. So we wanna see what are the coordinates of T, R, and I. Okay, well T, X is negative seven, Y is positive seven. T is negative seven, seven, okay? R, X is negative four, Y is nine. Okay. 
and i, x is negative 6, y is positive 2. Okay, well, so now let's get our coordinates for t prime, r prime, i, I prime for this last column over here, because this is our 90 degree counterclockwise turn. So we're just getting these coordinates straight from the picture, okay? And we're not doing anything with rules or anything yet. We have to figure out what the rule is by working backwards. Okay, so it looks like t prime, x is negative 7, y is negative 7. Okay, so t prime is negative 7, negative 7. Oops, put that in the wrong box. Okay, r prime, x is negative 9, y is negative 4. Negative 9, negative 4. Okay, finally we have i prime, x is negative 2, y is negative 6. All right, so if we look at this, we can kind of look at these coordinates and see what happened, right? Well, the t is, they're both sevens, that might be kind of hard to see. So we can look at r. Okay, well, first of all, in r and i, you notice that the x and the y switched places. Like r, the original r, was, if we just ignore the signs, we just look at the digits, it's four and nine, right? But for r prime, now 9 came first, and then 4 is second. Same thing with i, it was 6, 2, and then became 2, 6. So the first thing we notice is that the x and the y switch places. Well, something also changed. They switched places, but one of them is different. Like this negative 4, 9, they switched places, but 9 became negative. Same thing with i, negative 6, 2, 2 became negative, and then they switched places. Okay, and so the same thing happened for t too, it's just harder to tell because they're both sevens. But for each of these points, x and y switch places, and looks like the y changed signs. So we can write this down here on the margins. So for 270 degrees clockwise, which is 90 degrees counterclockwise, okay, y changed signs. So our original y changed signs, and then x and y switched places. Okay, so it's good to put into words what happened. Right, so our y changed signs, and then x and y seem to switch places. Okay, so far so good. So let's do the next turn. So we rotate it one more time and then line it up because again we're rotating the whole quadrant so we got to line the quadrant back up. Close it up I think. Okay. All right, I'm going to do this one in purple. So here is r prime, t prime, no it's upside down, i prime, and I'm going to connect my dots. Okay, alright, so now let's get to our coordinates. So again, t prime, r prime, and i prime. Okay, t prime, x is 7, y is negative 7. r prime, x is 4, y is negative 9. And i prime, x is 6, y is negative 2. Okay, so we can look at this. Did the x and the y switch places compared to the original? No? 
Four is still first, nine is still second, six is still first, two is still second, all right? So they didn't switch places this time, but they did change signs. The negative four became a positive four, and then positive nine became a negative nine. So same thing on I, negative six became positive, but positive two became negative. So the rule, or like here, we'll talk about the rules in a second, but the kind of verbal description of what happened, X and Y did not switch places but they both changed signs. Okay, so positive became negative, negative became positive, but they didn't switch places. Okay, last but not least, we have our final rotation. Right, because if we rotated it one more time, that would be 360 and it would be right back where we started. We don't want that, so. Okay, so last one, I'll do this in green. T prime, R prime, I prime. Let's connect the dots. There we go. Okay, just really quick, I'm going to take this, rotate it one more time so you can see what happens. Like this, we rotate it. See? Right back where we started. So 360 and 0 are the same thing. Okay, now that we're done with this, I'm just going to erase that. And so we're left with our three new, new shapes. Let's get our coordinates for this last one. So this is a 90 degree clockwise turn. So we go from left to right clockwise. That's one turn, 90 degrees. But if we go counterclockwise, that's one, one turn, one turn, two turns, three turns to end up in that same place. One, two, three. Okay. So let's get our coordinates. T prime, R prime, I prime. Okay. T prime, X is 7, Y is 7. They're both positive this time. This is 7, 7. R prime, Y is 9. Sorry, X is 9, Y is 4. Stylus is not cooperating with me. Even though I just changed the battery on it. Okay. And I prime, positive 2 for X and 6 for Y. Okay. So something similar happened with this compared to the 90 degrees counterclockwise. X and Y switch places, but this time, instead of the Y changing signs, the X changed signs, right? Because our negative 4 became positive, our negative 6 became positive, but the 9 and 2, the two Ys, stayed the same. So our verbal description for our 90 degrees clockwise, oops, which is the same as 270 degrees counterclockwise, X change signs. And then X and Y switched places. Okay. So that's a verbal description of what happened to the points. Well, so now we finally get to our algebraic rules. So before I had written them all out for you and you just had to copy them. Well, now we just kind of discovered it on our own. So for each of these, we start off with x, y. So 
So those are the original coordinates. The original coordinate is x, y. And then it becomes, okay, for 90 degrees clockwise, that's the one we just did, x and y switch places. So it, y comes first now, and the x changes signs. So that's how we represent it. 180 degrees, they don't switch places, but they do switch signs. And then, last but not least, the 90 degrees counterclockwise, or 270 clockwise, they switch places, but this time the y changes signs. So here are the three algebraic rules for rotations. Unlike with translations, it's nice because we just have this to work with, like that's all there is to it. You don't have to like count or do anything like that. It's nice. Okay. So a couple of other important things to note on the next page. We cover this over and over. What happens when a shape is rotated 360 degrees? This is the same as a zero degree turn. It goes back to where it started. Okay, is there a difference between rotating a figure 180 degrees clockwise versus rotating it 180 degrees counterclockwise? Well, no, because if you do two turns clockwise left to right, that's 180, 90 plus 90 is 180. But if you go two counterclockwise, that's still 180 because it's 90 and 90 is still 180. So for 180 degrees, that's why you don't see any W, C, C, W, or whatever on this middle column. It's because no, there's no choice, no change. For 180 degrees, direction does not matter. Okay, so let's again briefly talk about orientation. Okay, orientation of the figure changes, but orientation of the vertices does not change. Okay, so quick review of what that means. Orientation of the figure is which way the whole figure is facing. So here in our pre-image, okay, R is pointing up and to the right. After we rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, R is no longer pointing up and to the right, it's pointing kind of like down and to the right. If we rotate it again, 180, R is now pointing down and to the left. So every time we rotate it, it's no longer facing the same way as before. That's orientation of the figure. Orientation of the vertices, okay, that involves the letters. So like the labels, okay. Orientation of the vertices is looking at are the labels still in the same order from clockwise order or clock counterclockwise. <laughs> Bless me. Clockwise order or counterclockwise order. Okay, the original is TRI if you go clockwise and TIR if you go counterclockwise, right? Well, even though the figure is rotated, those letters still say the same. If you start here at T, what is happening here? If you start right here at T and you follow the labels and go clockwise, it's TRI. If you go to this shape, here's T, and go clockwise, T, R, I. If you go here and go clockwise, it's still T, R, I. If you go counterclockwise, it's still T, I, R. So even though the shape has rotated, the vertices are still in the same order as they were before. Okay, remember the only transformation where orientation of the vertices changes is reflections. You'll notice that the letters, oops, letters for the vertices will still be in the same order clockwise or counterclockwise, so that's showing you that orientation of the vertices didn't change. Okay, so let's take a second to spot the rotation. So we're going to look at these and figure out which way it went. Okay, well first of all, how do we figure out which one of these is a pre-image and which one of these is the image? It's by looking for the prime markings. So whenever we see the prime marking, that is telling us this is the image. So this is the pre-image, this is the image, so this shape went this away, 
it only moved one quadrant, so that's one turn. If you're going clockwise, which is the way I drew that arrow, that's clockwise. So that's a 90 degree clockwise turn. Which means automatically, if it's 90 degrees counterclock, sorry, it's 90 degrees clockwise, that's exactly the same as 270 degrees counterclockwise. Right? Because if we go the other way, that's one, two, three turns. Each quadrant that it goes through is a turn. So every, you count the quadrants if you want to, like, starts here, is one quadrant, two quadrants, three quadrants. That's three turns, counterclockwise. So three times 90 is 270. Whereas if you go clockwise, right, starting here, one turn and you're done. So that's 90 degrees clockwise, 270 counterclockwise. Here's another one. Here's the H. There's no apostrophe on it, so that means that's the pre-image, this is the image, so it went two turns this way, it also went two turns this way, so the only time where it's the same, because there's two turns, one, two, one, two, that's 180. 90 times two is 180, so end up with the same both ways. Okay, let's look at number three, same thing here, is a pre-image and an image. That means it went this away, one turn. This is counterclockwise if we're drawing a C. So if this is going this way, that's counterclockwise. So that means this is a 90 degree counterclockwise turn, which means 270 degrees clockwise. Okay, so I would like you to do number four on your own. Label the pre-image and the image and then figure out, all right, which way clockwise, which way counterclockwise. You can figure that one out, very similarly to the ones we already did. Okay, so now we're going to practice on the coordinate grid. Okay, we have quadrilateral Tony was rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise to form quadrilateral Tony prime. So we're going to draw the image and write the algebraic rule that describes the transformation. So we're going to go first, we're going to get the algebraic rule. Okay, so this is where I want to teach you guys the hand signals. So I'm going to do this backwards when it's on the camera, and you want to hold it out like in front of you. Okay, so your left hand, you want to cross your fingers like this, because this is X, and this is a P sign, this is Y. So I'm doing it backwards to show you, right? But this should be your left hand and this should be your right hand. Okay, so this is these are the hand signals. So when we're going 90 degrees counterclockwise, right? Counterclockwise means you're going from right to left. And you can't really do that with this hand because there's, there's nowhere to go over here. Well, take this. This is a 90 degree counterclockwise turn. So when we do it this way, first of all, you can see from your hands that the order changed because now Y is first, X is second, but because this is the hand that moved, your right hand, the Y moved, this is the hand that changes signs. So the hand that moves and crosses over is the one that changes signs. So this helps you remember this is the rule for a 90 degree counterclockwise turn, Y changes signs, and then they switch places. If we're doing 90 degrees clockwise, this way. X crosses over, so X changes signs, then they switch places. So I'll show this again. This is 90 degrees clockwise, so X crosses over like this. Last but not least, we have 180 degrees. That's a f like this. So 180, they do not switch places, but both of them switch signs. So X switches signs, Y switches signs. Okay, it's very important to note. Um, no, if I, yeah, it's very important to note that this is the same with reflections. Is that that negative does not mean that the number always has to be negative. It just means that it changed signs. So if it was negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Okay. So using our hand signals, we're going 90 degrees counterclockwise. Ooh, the rule is. Negative y, x. 
Again, I did it backwards for you guys. When you hold it out in front of you, you should see the X in your left hand and the Y in your right hand. I have to do it backwards because I'm doing it mirror reflection, and so I'm doing it backwards to show you guys. But when you have it out, I don't know if y'all can see this. So when you have it out in front of you, this should be X, this should be Y. Okay. So the rule for this, according to our hand signs, is that Y changes signs and then they switch places. So the rule is X, negative Y. So since we know the rule, we're just going to apply it to the points. Okay, so first we need our pre-image points. T, O, N, Y. Okay, so we'll get the points for this. T is 4, 1. O is 7, 0. N is 8, negative 5. And Y is 2, negative 3. Okay, so here's where a little bit of annotation will do you some good. So we know that the Y values are supposed to switch signs, right? So I'm just going to circle all of my Ys to remind myself, okay, this is the number that is going to change signs. If it's positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. And then I will make the numbers switch places. So T prime, 1 is the Y. 1 becomes negative 1, and then they switch places. So negative 1, 4. Okay, O, same thing, except, okay, can we flip 0? Same thing with reflections? No, we cannot flip zero. So zero just stays zero because it can't be positive or negative, and then they switch sides. Or not switch sides, they switch places. Oh, I forgot the prime markings. N prime, negative five becomes positive five, and then they switch places. So this becomes five, eight. Last but not least, Y prime, negative three becomes positive three. and then the, they switch places. So we have positive three, two. My stylus, once again, does not want to cooperate. There you go. Okay, well now that we have that, we're just gonna draw these points in. So negative one, four, right here. This is T prime. Zero, seven is right here. This is O prime. 5, 8, which is n prime, and y prime is at 3, 2. I know it's kind of inside of this box. I messed up. Okay, then we connect the lines, or sorry, connect the dots with lines. That makes our little polygon, our little quadrilateral. So you will notice that when you rotate it, each vertice, vertex, still say, stays the same distance away from the origin. So let me show you. This T, 4, and 1. So if you remember our distance formula where we draw the little right triangle, so to find this distance from this point to 0, we would do 4 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared, right? I'm not going to do that, but if you notice, when we do t prime, or t, over here, and draw another right triangle, it's still 1 and 4. It would still be 4 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. So whatever c squared is, the square root of 17 it looks like, is the same for both. So no matter what, when you rotate it, each point should still stay the same distance away from the origin, because this is our point of rotation. So this line and this line are the same distance. And the same length, I should say. Okay, so that's important to note. Okay. So number six is going to be the same thing. So I'll do it one more time to show you. This is the order that you want to be going for these problems. First, you read the problem. And then you get the algebraic rule. So this is step one, algebraic rule. Okay, it says 180 degrees. Aha! This is the hand sign for 180 degrees. They do not switch places, but they both change signs. So our algebraic rule is xy becomes negative x, negative y. 
Okay, so let's get our pre-image points. That's our second step, is to get our pre-image points from the picture. So we just look at these points and copy them down. So M is negative 8, negative 1. A is negative 6, negative 5. T is negative 2, negative 4. And H is negative 7, negative 8. All right, so now we get to our image. They just all switch signs. So all of these numbers right now are negative, so all of our image points are just going to be a bunch of positive points instead. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now we just have to draw them. So 8, 1 is M prime. 6, 5 is A prime. 2, 4 is T prime. And 7, 8 is H prime. And then we connect. Make sure you want to connect the dots similarly to when we did on the other shape, or similarly to the other shape. So like M is connected to A. T is connected to A. And then T and M are both connected to H, because if you connect the dots in the wrong order, then your shape is going to look really weird. I'm going to move this label. There we go. Okay. And so we should have labeled. So this is the third step. We forgot to label these. Third step would be to get the image coordinates by applying the rule. And then fourth step is draw the picture. So step one, read the problem and then get the rule. Use your hand signs to get the rule. Step two, get the pre-image points from the picture. Step three, apply the rule to the pre-image points to get the image points. Step four, draw the image. If you need to see those hand signs again, just rewind. That's important. Go look at those again. All right. Doot. This is 90 degrees clockwise, 90 degrees counterclockwise, 180. You just have to memorize these rules. They're not going to be on your formula sheet. Okay? Okay, so number seven is exactly the same as five and six, but with different numbers. So I want y'all to try that one on your own. Okay? I want you to try number seven on your own. So let's look now at number eight. If you want to need help on number seven, just let me know in class sometime. Number eight is a slightly different kind of problem, okay? It says triangle OCT oct was rotated about the origin to form triangle O prime, C prime, T prime. How many degrees was it rotated and what algebraic rule describes this transformation? So this is more like some of those practice we did because this time we have both pictures. We know this is the pre-image because there's no prime markings. So this is the pre-image, this is the image, so if you're going clockwise, this is one quadrant, two quadrants, three quadrants, that's three turns. Each turn is 90 degrees, so that is 270 degrees clockwise. If we went the other way, it would be 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, 270 degrees clockwise, or rather 90 degrees counterclockwise is this turn. 90 degrees counterclockwise. The hand signs only do 90. So you need to figure out what it is as 90, then you can do the 270 after. Okay, so 90 degrees counterclockwise means Y changes signs, then they switch places. Which makes sense if you look at this too. Right? So our algebraic rule, all right, so this was step one. Step two is to write the algebraic rule using your hand signs or very strong memory, x, y. y changes signs and then they switch places. Okay? And then we just fill out the points. This part is just for you to practice your points. It's not, you don't really need to do this to figure it out. Unless you really can't remember the rule, then you can copy down all of the points and use that to help you, like you can work backwards, so that's one way to do it. Otherwise, this is just a way for you to practice 
plotting points and stuff. Okay, so I did that half. So you can fill out the image points on your own, figure that out. But again, for these types of problems, you don't need it. Unless you really can't remember your hand signs, then once you have the pre and image, you can kind of do like we did earlier and be like, oh, they switched places and then this one changed signs. So work backwards and help yourself that way. Okay. All right. So number nine and number 10 are pretty much the same thing. So I don't want to go through that again. Um, you need to figure out which one of these is the pre-image which one is the image? Count how many quadrants it passed through to figure it out. Then you have your hand signs to figure out the rule. Then from that, you're basically done. You can just fill out the table with the pre-image and image coordinates to practice. All right, that's a wrap. I know this is a very long video. There's a lot to do with rotations, but the way I hope this helped you, if it was confusing, do let me know. And I will see you in class.